the initial feeling that a baby gets when he or she first stands is unbelievable. They're so happy that they stood up that it's like the greatest thing in the world. You look at their smile and you say, wow, I want to be that happy like this baby. This, this, this year old baby is so happy that he stood up. Even though he's going to fall on his tushy two seconds later. For those two seconds, he's the happiest baby on planet Earth. But then, after a while, he's not so happy about standing anymore. Why? He wants more. He wants more than standing. He wants to start walking. So he takes a few steps and he falls. He gets a little upset, so he gets up again. And he falls, and he gets up again, and he falls, and it's not enough for him. He's not as happy. You see him start walking, taking a step. He's not as happy. When did he start getting happy? I start taking three, four, five steps. Like he's the happiest thing in the world. Why? I took four steps. But guess what? After a little while, four steps is not enough. Why? He wants to run like his brother and sister. Why? It's not enough to just take three, four steps. Yeah, but you were feeling good yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Yesterday's a long time ago. To a kid a long time ago is yesterday. Then he starts running. And he runs. And he feels good about it. But then eventually that's not enough. He wants something more. That's a Baal Tshuva. A Baal Tshuva that's going to continue to aspire for more. Will get back that feeling and more than what he had originally. But a Baal Tshuva that sparks. But you know it's not really. Why? Well, here's another old alakot. Here's no, you're not allowed to drive because the rabbi says you're gonna die. He knows you're not allowed to uh, touch different things, so because the rabbi says you're probably gonna die. The rabbi keeps saying you keep dying, so he doesn't move the whole Shabbat. He sleeps. Guess what? After six months of this, he hates Shabbat. Why? He doesn't know why he's keeping it. He puts on tefillin. Why? Because the rabbi says if you don't have it, you're gonna die. So he puts on tefillin. Do do do. He puts tefillin, 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 tefillin. After six months of this, he can't stand going to shul. Why? He doesn't know anything about this mitzvah. How is he going to enjoy it? It's parked at standing. After a while, standing is not enough. Why? The neshama wants more. The neshama is telling you, why do you lay tefillin? Why? Why is it square? Why is it black? Why don't you ever see somebody with pink and rims on a tefillin? Why? Why do we do it? What does the Torah say about it? How come the Gemara Masechet Rosh Shana says there are certain people that sin and they get punished for a year, but there are certain people that sin with their body and their punishment is eternally, even after Mashiach. And it says, what kind of example? It says, example is somebody that doesn't put on tefillin. He goes to gain on forever. So long as he doesn't care, he's never going to enjoy the mitzvah. He's never going to get that original feeling that he had in the beginning when he did care. What do you think of when you think of a baby other than cute? You think of the baby's personality. A baby's personality is that he always wants more. He wants to learn more. He wants to do more. He's interested in everything. Everything goes in his mouth. Everything he wants to look at. Everything he wants to do by himself. He says that's what you're supposed to be. You're supposed to want more. More of Hashem's Torah, more of Hashem's mitzvot, more understanding of the Divine Presence, more. That's what we have ambition for. A Baal Tshuva is like a baby. A convert is like a baby. They want everything. If you stay with that mentality, you'll get really far. You'll get to the holiest place on earth, holiest place in the universe. If you stay with that mentality, and you exercise that mentality of wanting more, more mitzvot, more Torah, more knowledge, more clarity, you'll arrive at the greatest point that anyone else can. But if you stop acting like a baby, and you don't want more anymore, because you're happy with what you have, you start acting like a retiree. You just want to sit there and do nothing until you die. Then you start suffering then everything becomes like a burden. All mitzvot become like a burden. It's like one sack of potatoes. Why? You don't want to put in anything into it. You don't want it. When you don't want something, automatically it becomes bad. When you don't want to be married, automatically your spouse becomes ugly. When you don't like your job, guess what? Automatically, you start seeing everything that's wrong with this company. You don't want to do mitzvot, 
all of a sudden all the rabbis are terrible. All of a sudden you're having questions about God. Who made God? How come you didn't ask this the first five years? How come? Because it's not the question. You don't want to be religious. You want to be the Shah. Enjoy yourself and gain no. If you're going to do that. But once you start realizing my lack of enjoyment is only because of my lack of effort. When I put effort into it, I liked it. You have to find a way to push yourself to start investing more. You invest more into doing it, you're going to start liking it.